Welcome to Managing Uncertainty, a podcast series from the experts at Bright Path discussing global risk, business continuity, and crisis management. Will you be ready to lead your organization through its critical moment? Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty podcast. This is Brian Strausser, Principal and CEO here at Bright Path. And in this week's episode, I want to talk about an interesting topic, perhaps a little bit of an unusual topic, and that is pet preparedness. Preparedness for your furry creatures uh, or other pets that you have in your life and how you incorporate them into your personal preparedness planning. And I'm doing this as a part of National Preparedness Month, the month of September here in the United States that we've talked about in a previous episode. The question is, when disaster strikes your home, your neighborhood, or your local community, what will happen to your pet? Now, if you follow the National Preparedness Month messaging from year to year, you know that the Ready campaign, the campaign around personal and family and community preparedness from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and the Federal Emergency Management Agency, they recommend that every family have a plan that they make or buy a kit and they get informed. They get connected to local alerting for disasters and, and, and national alerting for disasters through organizations like FEMA because we want to be prepared for a disaster that might impact them, uh, an individual or a family or their local community. But including your pet or pets in your planning is an important part of keeping your family safe during a disaster. Because I, I don't, I, I've always had pets growing up. I've had cats and I've had dogs and um, fish and, and other uh, animals along the way. They all become part of our families. And so when we're thinking about planning and preparedness for our families, including your pet in your planning is an important part of keeping your family safe during a disaster. So let's kind of break this down into a few things. We want folks to be prepared by making a plan and having a disaster kit for their pet. So let's start with the preparation about making a plan. The first is to make sure, particularly for, for dogs and cats and other um, animals that are completely mobile on their own, you want to make sure they have collars and tags with up-to-date uh, contact information and other identification. I should point out as we go through this that um, th this discussion is going to be really focused on dogs and cats and similar animals uh, that are mobile like that they're gonna, that are going to wear a collar. Um, certainly uh, fish and um, snakes and reptiles and others are things that we may think we, we a lot of folks will keep as pets. Um, this discussion isn't really targeted at that, but there's definitely some things in common for what we're going to talk about that would apply to those animals as well. So first we want to make sure that, that pets have collars and have tags with up-to-date contact information and other appropriate identification. You may want to consider microchipping your pets. Um, this is one of the best ways to ensure that, that you and your pet are reunited if you're separated. It allows for really easy identification uh, on a large scale by public safety agencies. You want to make sure that you register that microchip through your veterinarian or directly with the manufacturer and keep your contact information up to date with a microchip company. You should have a pet carrier for each of your pets. And on that carrier, put your pet's name, your name, and contact information on the carrier. You will want to make sure that your pet is familiar with their transport crate uh, before a crisis so that there's not additional trauma on top of the trauma of having to evacuate. It may be good to practice transporting your pet by taking them for rides in a vehicle that's similar to the one that you would evacuate in so they would get used to moving down the road in their transport carrier in a vehicle. And if necessary, you should practice catching your pet. I know my dog, um, Frenchie, is a... Uh, She's a miniature schnauzer, three-year-old miniature schnauzer. She does not like to go in that cage. And if she know if if we're going to the vet, uh, as she went actually earlier today, she is not happy about that. So there has to be there's been some practice between my wife and I about cornering the dog in order to get her into the transport carrier. You may want to practice doing the same thing, particularly if you're on your own. Keep a leash and or the carrier near the exit. We keep ours in the garage, so it's right by the vehicles. It's easy to get to, uh, and the leash is uh, always in the same place. In your car, make sure that you have the proper equipment for your pet to ride in the car. Carriers, uh, there are actually harnesses and pet seat belts that you can use as well. If you don't have a car, make arrangements with friends, neighbors, and family 
uh, or um, if you're going to be reliant upon public transportation, it's not a bad idea to even this far out when there's nothing going on to contact your local government or transit agency and find out about their transportation options uh, going into a disaster. Think about where you and your pet are going to stay if you have to evacuate. You may need, based upon the severity or speed of a disaster, you may need to shelter in place, meaning that you're going to stay uh, at your residence and shelter there as the disaster passes, like a hurricane or uh, severe weather. Um, or you're going to shelter in a facility away from home. Maybe you're going to a relative's house uh, in an evacuation. Maybe you're going to your parents. Uh, maybe you're staying with friends that are 100 miles away or out of the uh, impacted area. But again, um, think about where you would go and if there are any restrictions or issues that you're going to need to work through in that situation. So those are some thoughts about making a plan. The second part uh, for pet preparedness is to prepare a pet disaster kit. Um, these are things that you're going to need to take with you in a disaster, uh, an evacuation. The first is food. You're going to want to make sure that you have food in airtight, waterproof containers or cans for all of your pets. And you should really store about two weeks worth of food. And you're going to want to do the same for water so that you have both food and water available for your pets. The second is to make sure that you have food and water bowls available and if you're using any kind of cans you want to have a manual can opener and in fact whether you're using cans or not to store your food and water you may want to bring a manual can opener in your pet disaster kit so that you can open other pet food cans because if that's the only thing that you're able to obtain while evacuating or when you get to where you're going if you're not able to get other types of food you're going to need to be able to open those pet food cans in order to feed your pet for cats you're going to want to bring a litter box and litter for dogs, you're going to want to bring plastic bags so that you can deal with their feces. You may want to bring cleanup items for bathroom accidents like paper towels, plastic trash cans, bleach containing cleaning agent, um, particularly if you need to clean soft material like your car, uh, clothing, uh, a towel, uh, a blanket, etc. If your animal takes any medications, then bring two weeks worth of medication in your pet disaster kit. You also want to bring any treats uh, or toys that you use to give the medication and bring pharmacy contact or prescription contact information to get refills in case you're not able to return home for some period of time. Next item in your pet disaster kit are medical records. You will want to have the rabies vaccination certificate uh, for your pet. Don't rely just upon the collar tag. You're going to want the actual vaccination certificate so that it's accepted by folks at the other end if you need to show that. You want to bring a copy of any medical records or vaccination records that you have. If your pet has a microchip, you're going to want a record of the microchip number so that you're able to um, you know, track that as needed with the manufacturer or service. You should bring any prescriptions or medications. Uh, I'm sorry, you should bring any prescriptions that are necessary for medication that your pet is taking. For cats, you should bring the most recent um, FIV test results or vaccination dates. And then beyond that, I would bring a copy from your veterinarian of any pertinent medical history that's necessary. And you can just get this in your, your annual vet appointment uh, with your veterinarian and just ask for a copy of the records for your pet disaster kit. You should also think about sturdy leashes or harnesses or tie-out kits uh, that are necessary for your animal, uh, for your pet. If you happen to be somewhere and you're able to tie them outside for a while, like at a rest area, and let them get some fresh air uh, and wander a bit, but still be safe and in your control. You may also want to invest in a carrier or a cage that's large enough for your pet to stand comfortably in and turn around, along with the towels and blankets to make that comfortable for them. I know my dog has a traveling cage traveling carrier that we use for trips to the vet and the groomer and what have you. But we have a bigger cage uh, that she slept in as a puppy that um, has a nice uh, mat in the bottom and you put some blankets in there and it actually folds down to a manageable size. And then when, you know, if you went to a hotel room or you got to where you were going and they needed to be in there at night, you just stand up the walls and snap them together. And now I've got a cage that she can walk around in a little bit and be more comfortable than in the transit carrier. You will want to bring any pet toys uh, or pet bed 
um, that makes your pet feel comfortable and at home and keeps them calm. And then uh, remember that any documents and medication and food should be stored in waterproof containers like a, like a good piece of Tupperware or a plastic storage container, things along those lines. So these are some examples. Uh, if you visit the Ready Campaign website, there is a pets and animals section. And you can get even more specific advice. I believe there's some checklists and some other content that you can find there that would be helpful to you. Uh, in a disaster uh, with your animal. But we want to make sure they're they're part of our family, right? So we want to make sure that they're taken care of as we're evacuating and, and taking care of the rest of our family. So by taking these steps, you're really working to protect the health of your pet and making sure that all of your family is safe and can stay together. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty podcast. We'll be back next week with yet another episode of our podcast. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to this episode of Managing Uncertainty, produced by the experts at BrightPath. To receive notifications of new episodes, join our newsletter at brightpath.com or subscribe to your favorite podcast player, such as iTunes or Google Play. Learn more about the services and trusted advice from BrightPath by visiting brightpath.com. That's B-R-Y-G-H-T-P-A-T-H dot com.